Welcome to today's webinar presented by Supercoder.com. Supercoder.com is an online coding solution offering Part A and B coding reference tools, resources, and not more than 30 specialty coding and compliance newsletters from the Coding Institute in one site. I hope you enjoy this short session. About that uh, later. So the first question that I have, uh, which we find that coders are confused a lot about when providers document uh, on their documentation the ICD-9 CM code number itself. And they're wondering, is there an official policy or a guideline that requires them to record a written diagnosis instead of an ICD-9 code? Now, we know that doctors are trained in ICD-9-CM codes, but they change so rapidly um, that they, we barely have time to be able to keep up with them. Uh, with the changes and the guidelines, uh, along with the insurance coverages, you know, what's going to be payable and what is not, um, if it needs a fourth or fifth digit with the diagnosis code, uh, so it is much better for the physicians to be able to write the diagnosis on it instead of an, uh, a code number. Uh, and you should never use that code number uh, as it being written in stone because we all know that it isn't. So, yes, there are regulatory and accreditation derivatives uh, to supply documentation in order to support that code assignment. So providers need to have the ability to specifically document the patient's diagnosis uh, or condition or problem. You know, so it's not appropriate for providers to list the code number or select the code number from a list of codes such as on an encounter form where the, where the codes are listed and the doctor just has to put a little check mark in a little box uh, in place of uh, writing out a diagnostic statement. In fact, your ICD-9-CM is a statistical classification, so it's not really a diagnosis. Some ICD-9 codes, as we know, include multiple different clinical diagnoses, and it can be of great clinical importance to convey these diagnoses specifically in the medical record itself. Also, some diagnoses require more than one ICD-9-CM code to fully explain it. For instance, if you're coding diabetes, we all know that you need at least two codes uh, with all the manifestations that happen with diabetes. So it is the provider's responsibility to provide clear and legible documentation of a diagnosis. And then we as coders take that uh, documentation and translate it to a code for external reporting purposes. So if a doctor ever writes the code on it itself, yes, you want to go ahead and clarify that code and read the documentation or his office note, progress note, hospital note, whichever it is that you're coding, and make sure that that is documented in there. Uh, in the words of diabetes or hypertension and, and see if there are more manifestations or anything else that needs to code that correctly. And I would advise the physician, if you're in that position to do that, um, to not write the, the code number on there because of the changes. And they know it changes, but they tend to forget and they think that, oh, I know this code, so I'll write it out. Well, again, it might have changed since then. Okay, another question is, this patient uh, is an 81-year-old female presented to the emergency department in a coma after having suffered a large intraventricular hemorrhage due to hypertension. Supercoder is the fastest-growing online reference tool with more than 25,000 subscribers. Call 866 228-9252 to get a free product demo or sign up at supercoder.com for a seven-day free trial. 